So finally it has arrived. Today we are installing our Santa Flow macerator unit in the basement. Basement, that's, that's a big word. We'll call it cellar. It's pretty narrow and tight down there. It's an old space that doesn't have a lot of head space and so we've got plumbing coming from different corners of the house all heading to the septic tank. Right now I've got pipes everywhere in that basement. It's hard to navigate. They're all running along the outside walls. So I'm redoing all of the plumbing and sewer system in this house. And I'm gonna run it all into this machine in the middle of the home so that I can have a functioning septic system. This is a macerator pump. There's two units in it that auger independently and it will take care of all of the waste and garbage that goes into your system and pumps it out to that septic tank with ease and it takes all the stress and pressure off of a home system. So I am really happy to have it here. The only thing we had to do is get an extra vent. It needs its own venting stack that's the only inconvenience but since we're gutting this house and rebuilding anyway I installed that already now we're gonna hook up our plumbing because my new bathroom needs to be connected to this thing before I can have my first shower and if you're not sure what I'm talking about when you're watching this there's a link in the description with a playlist for all the new awesome man bathroom that I made with the gorgeous shower I just can't wait to use now I've got to get this thing opened up to find out if I've got everything that I need to do the install in case I gotta go shopping. Wow, it says important. That's a lot of reading. Okay. It comes with a lot of different fittings and gear clamps. That's great. Looks like it has all the conversions necessary to attach your existing plumbing lines to the unit. It has awesome power supply. Wow, and that is a 14 gauge. It needs, a, needs its own circuit. Now this, this cabling is already connected to the pumps. Yes, okay. So I've got to find somewhere. I've got to build a mounting unit that I can put on the wall to put this close by. And other than that, okay, my plumbing connections are gonna be good. They've marked the one that's for venting. Wow, this is gonna be really simple. This is actually gonna be very DIY. Am I ever excited to show you how to go through this? All right, I'm gonna go read through the book. We're gonna get this taken to the basement. I'm gonna to run to the store and pick up a panel so I can mount my electrical controls. <sighs> and then we're gonna start installing this thing for you. Hopefully, we can have this put together in the next couple of hours. <laughs> Loving my Santa flow. You know, the beautiful thing about this is it allows you to have plumbing in any part of a house and you don't have to worry about the slope or your, your, your plumbing systems that's, you know, limitations that you have in your home. This sucker here will pump sewage, I think it's like 50 or 100 feet vertical, let alone horizontal. So if you're in a single family home and you've got one of these units, you can run anything anywhere. And you can, so we're gonna actually add a wet bar to our front living room. We're taking all of the plumbing, including the plumbing from the island. It's all gonna be diverted into here and I'm gonna have one pipe pumped up, hiding in the ceiling out of the way. That'll make it possible for me to insulate my basement walls. Awesome. Now thanks to our friends over at Santa Flow, I have been using some of their products for years and they actually reached out to us and asked if we wanted to do a collaboration. And I said yes, because I was desperate to get one of these units in my basement. So uh, in answer, yes, it is a sponsored video this time. Surprise, surprise, right? The channel is growing and happy to do it because this is one of these companies that I love. Listen, one thing on this channel, if I'm gonna be endorsing a product, it's because I've been using it for years and I love it. Uh, I don't like to change my mind because of dollar signs. But Santa, Santa Flow is one of these companies that just, it's a, it's, it's a problem solving company. Everything they sell solves a problem and I just love them for that. So let's just get to work now. You know, while I'm tripping over this thing, I should just mention this. This is a unit from EnviroGlanzen. For years, we've been using uh, negative air, and we've also been using HEPA filters uh, inside of our major construction job sites, just because it, I like to have clean air quality where I'm working. I don't like to wear a mask as much as possible. And what this does here is when you're renovating your own home, especially in older houses, you put one of these air filtration units near the door to the separation from your work to where you're living, right? You always have a separation area. What this does is this is a massive cleaner. It takes care of all the particulates, right? It's also a HEPA filter in here, and it takes care of the VOCs, which is awesome. So 
All of the new products that you're installing are off-gassing, and so what this does is it, it eats all that up as well. It's amazing. It doesn't add any kind of chemicals or smelling agents to the air. It just cleans it. And it was made and designed for use for the military so they could be protected against different kind of chemical attacks. This stuff is off the chart quality. EnviroCleanse, I'm going to put the link in the description. Because if you're not cleaning your air when you're renovating a house, God only knows what you're putting in the air and what you're suscept making susceptible to your family. I recommend filtering your air all the time. So I just want to make it perfectly clear before we go further in this video that I have never installed any Santa Flow products. I have been a big fan of their technology for years. Uh, I've used them on sites where other people have installed them, but I've never done it myself. So when we had the opportunity to switch the entire house over to this macerator unit so that I could really clean up my, my basement sewer lines and just get everything installed with the proper flow rate and venting, I was like, yeah, let's do this, right? So we're going to go through this um, from the perspective of someone who's never done it before. And you can learn from all the mistakes that I make along the way as well. The idea here is pretty simple though. I mean, it is, it is straightforward plumbing. It's um, a lot of these quick connect situ situations, right? The, the products, they come with all these fittings that you need. So this is your three inch intake and they've got, well, let me just bring this over. They've got all the gear clamps in the bag, okay, to make all the fittings. These are all stainless steel, they're good quality. So you're not gonna have issues with these down the road. They provide the adjustment, okay, for the, that's the outtake, okay? This is the discharge valve area here. Um, in the book, they have really good pictures. Every single scenario, it's very good color. I, you know, they show you every opportunity for where you can connect. They have intakes on the side as well. All these little places here that you can put things in. On the back is where the vent is. Now these units need their own venting. Very important that the unit, and this is key, you can't cheat here. Very important this unit stays at um, atmospheric pressure, all right? It will not function otherwise because it has an alarm system set up. And that's what this is. This goes into the alarm system with the control panel that's already attached. And we're gonna hang our control panel off on a wall here but this just snaps in place. It's plug and play alarm system. So if the water level gets too high, it creates pressure in the system, okay? And then the alarm will go off. If you cheat and you try using one of these little cheater valves, we've all seen these, right? The little screw in the top. A lot of people use these in underneath kitchen sinks and old houses from the 60s where they didn't have proper venting. Um, you know, the old days they used to vent just underneath the kitchen window <laughs> off the back of the kitchen sink. Unbelievable. So then you get that sewer gas in the driveway when you're walking into the house. So when guys renovate, they cheat and they throw one of these on. Apparently it's acceptable in some situations, but in this one, it's not. Don't get creative. Follow the instructions and this will work very well for you. This unit here, of course, has a discharge pump and that's here if you need to get access for maintenance. It has two macerator units. And the reason I got the one with two is because if I'm gonna put the whole house on this system, if one of these macerator units fails, I need to have the system oper operating while I'm getting maintenance done. I'm gonna place an order for service or for parts. I need to have it operating still. So it takes turns, okay? The unit has its own control panel, like I said, and it'll take turns. If one of them fails, it'll just go work on the other one as a reserve. It's really plug and play. And then all we have to do now is connect our three inch existing line from the bathroom. We're gonna bring it down into here. We're gonna connect this to our new vent that we ran out through the roof. And this is our discharge pipe. Now, <laughs> this is fun. So in the book, they've got this great chart and it shows the unit and the vertical capability up to 30 feet, all right? So if you wanna make a bunker in your cellar and be a prepper, you can use one of these. <laughs> um, it also, at 30 feet high, it'll also go 32 feet horizontally. But at six feet high, it goes 360 feet horizontally, which is crazy. So, I mean, that is, that is really awesome. I think I got that number right. Three feet up, 360, six feet high, sorry, it goes 320. That means you can use this unit to build a carriage house because one of the rules where we live anyway, and if we build a second building on the property, it has to share either the, the well or the septic. This makes, you can share the septic. You can put one of those units in the other building, pump it over to the same septic tank. That is phenomenal. So there's a lot of flexibility here. Now, Santa Flow as a whole, um, it's a huge company. They got all kinds of products. That ranges just from having a toilet with a pump on it, 
that'll discharge into your system. Okay, so if you're uh, if you're out in the country and you've got your your septic set up, you've all seen that big black pipe running halfway across the wall. You need to be able to pump up to that point and then back down into that line. They make toilets that have individual pumps. They have showers that have pumps, so you can put a bathroom in a basement. They have much smaller units, okay, that you can just put two or three fixtures on. This is designed for a whole house. And they have a, a single motor version as well, okay, if it's a little smaller situation like a cottage. The point being, if you have a problem with your plumbing, or you need a creative solution to extend your plumbing services in your home or add a basement bathroom, get in touch with these guys, all right? You can go to your local Ferguson's or your Wolseley if you're in Canada and contact these people. Um, we're going to put a link in the description to contact Santa Flow directly. they got great technical support and they can help you if you have trouble during your installation as well. So, all that being said, we are going to start running some pipe and show you how easy it is to assemble all this. So one other thing that they have here is they have a bunch of one and a half um, adapters that go on these stems, okay? And they come already capped. So if you're planning on a renovation and you want to add something later to the system, you can install this to the system now. And then when you're ready, just slice that off, stick your pipe in, put on a clamp and go. <laughs> All right? So this is brilliant. I'm actually going to just put one of these on every one of these stems if I'm using it or not, just so I don't lose them great for future. I mean, holy cow. They've really thought of everything, haven't they? Now, one of the other benefits I should mention, they have the side intakes. This system here does not require the busting of concrete to put in a bathroom. Because you can have a macerator unit like this, and you can use one of the small pumps if you want to add a bathroom. And it can pump it in through the side. It's more than enough to do that. And then let this unit take care of it from there and pump it all the way step. Oh, you gotta love the flexibility of that. So what I'm curious about is, if you're watching this video, are you planning on doing a, um, an, a, an addition to the house? Are you gonna looking to put a bathroom in your basement? Do you just wanna change over your system because it's antiquated and you don't have good flow and you're always getting clogs and frozen pipes and anything like that? I'm really curious in the comment section below why you're interested in doing a unit like this. That'd be really helpful and then we can hopefully be able to give you some information and help you with all your decision making process. So the way they send this unit, they send it so that you have to pick the input, your supply lines, okay? The vent is already marked here. It's got this little red label. So we're just gonna peel off that plastic and go with it. The discharge does not have a cap, okay? So we can just grab our ring. That's a little small. That looks like the right one. There we go. All right, so we're gonna put our discharge on. What I want to do is just finish completing all the installation of prepping to convert to the ABS. So we're going to finish all my fittings first and then we'll convert. Now my three inch line I'm bringing in back here. Okay. And so I have a PVC saw in the shed, but before I get to that, I'm going to see if this works. <clears throat> if I can just cut in, if it's made sensitive or not. Oh boy. Okay. No. You're not using a knife to open this up. So we're gonna need our PVC saw. I'll be right back. Well, you can tell just by looking at this bad boy, I don't use it very often. <laughs> but man, when you need one, it sure comes in handy. Let's take a look at this. This is going to be a one and a half inch intake. Yeah, that was some thick pipe. You're not, you're not cutting through that with a knife. Wow. Just gonna deburr here a little bit. There's probably gonna be better options for tools. You could always use your Dremel <laughs> with a little cutting blade on it. Anything with a fine tooth action.
So just so you're aware, that's made designed for a four inch intake, different plumbing codes depending on where you live. So if you have a four inch intake code, you're set with this machine. Where I live, it's a three inch. And so this little piece here converts from four to three with the use of a coupling. And that coupling is the same diameter as this pipe here. So we can put that coupling in, <laughs> get her down in there, okay? Woo! And throw in one of these rings right here. I can create the compression right there and I can convert it to three inch, which is perfect. Okay, so here we go. We're gonna cut this open now. This is just tape shut. I'm gonna get rid of all this packaging and tape. Clean as you go. <laughs> so, the vent is going to require fitting as well. So these things here are designed to go all the way to fit down to one and a quarter pipe. So if you have old copper in your house that's one and a quarter drains, it'll still convert to that. Nice. Like it's incredibly flexible. It's just uh, not the easiest stuff to cut. Definitely want to watch your fingers here. That's a, that's a new blade too. Okay. So we're going to put that fitting here for the vent. There we go. We got that one for that. We got that for that. We're going to need that one. We're going to need that one. And what I'm going to do is I'm taking the rest of these rings and I'm putting them all in storage so I don't lose them for future consideration. Yeah. And I'm going to take this. I'm going to stick this one on for future consideration. I'll keep all that in storage in the same place just so I don't have to worry about where to find it later. Okay, so now we're going to tighten up our clamps. Secret here is make sure you're in between the ribbed areas here. Okay, when you're tightening. You don't want to be half on and half off. You won't get proper compression. So when you're getting close, just make sure that you're not sitting on a ridge. All right. That way you're actually creating equal pressure on the same flat surface. Now, that's it. Don't go overboard driving crazy like this. You're going to strip this thing up. Then you're going to be in a world of hurt. Okay, this one goes right underneath here. Same thing, right up to that ridge. There we go. Now this is a little bit flexible, accordion-like, which is awesome. So if your angle, your pipe isn't perfect, it'll still install, no problem. Now we're gonna get this one on. This is our vent. Yeah. Okay, we get this one attached here. This is the discharge. Again, make it a nice on that flat surface. There we go. These are all extras for now. We really only have one pipe to install at this point. After we do our kitchen renovation, we're going to redirect the line from the kitchen and hopefully from our new bar in the other room. Eventually, it'll all come into here. So we're just going to leave that ready to go for now. We're ready to go today. All right, so we're just going to add a few pieces of fitting and pipe here to connect the existing line. Now, word of warning, when you're doing waistline. Maintain your building code, so have a nice long sweeping elbows. Don't use those short 90s like you do in a vent system. Here we go. That will go in here. Yeah. Nice. Just a quick tip here when you're marking this stuff, just take a knife, put a score in the pipe and pull it back out again. Don't forget, I haven't glued this joint together yet. Okay, so there's my score. So that's fully inserted into that. Sometimes when you score, you'll see that you only got a quarter inch. When you add the glue, it, it'll seat the whole way. But that's my full three quarters, so I'm fully seated when I do that. I'm gonna take just a little bit of pipe off to guarantee my slope because that was almost too level. There we go, I just took a quarter inch off. My measurement was just too exact last time. And the fitting, I'm gonna drop it in and then turn where I want it to go. Okay. Now, of course, I've always got the flexibility to make this adjustment and connection. Awesome. My OCD is going to kick into place, so I'm going to want to hold it straight up while I measure the distance to the other pipe. 
23 and a half. <laughs> we're gonna run up and down the stairs and we're done that part. Just a little tip here, take the back side of the knife, not the blade, and just give everything a quick rub, deeper. Okay, all this pipe, you don't wanna have little pieces of ABS curled up inside the pipe, because it'll grab paper and debris as it goes along. It'll cause you a bit of a problem. I recommend using the blue PVC glue because I find it gives you just a little bit more working time than the yellow. <laughs> At the end of the day, when you're doing this alone and you don't do plumbing every day of your life, having a little bit extra working time is not a bad thing. Make sure you glue both sides. This is like a solvent and it's actually going to start melting the PVC. And it'll only activate for a little while, a few seconds. Go, get this where I want it now. Let all that glue set up. Perfect. Whew. <laughs> Hot and humid in the basement. I can't wait to get that new furnace and air conditioning system installed, but one thing at a time. So we're just gonna work left to right here, and now it's connect time to connect our vent. We just got a measurement of 45 inches. And my thumb there. Now the cool thing about this pipe is it's full of print. So once you measure, you can just get a mental mark of where to put it. It's on the bracket next to that. Get nice and convenient. And I'll pull up my little cutting tool. And it has one tooth on it. And there we go. It's that convenient. No burrs. It's perfect every time. I just love it. Now, this is not a glue joint down there. It's just a clamp. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue my elbow on it now before I get it set up in there. Here we go. So now we're ready to stick that in and I'm going to aim that towards where it's going to go. Okay. Well, we're going to finish in the rough before we connect it down here just in case I got to make an adjustment. I'm nine inches to there. Let's do that. The shorter the pipe, the harder this is. So I got a regular 90 for venting. Okay, so the pipe can go inside either side, or I've got a street 90. And one side is the same diameter as the pipe. So you can use this in tight fitting spaces to connect pieces together without having to cut a piece of pipe in addition. That can be super handy. That's what we're gonna use over there. I like that location. All right, do do do. Okay. All right. Our vent is now connected. The only thing to do is just tighten on that last gear clamp down here. Okay. Well, we're getting there. So next step is to start working on the discharge pipe. We're going to put that one in with the clamp. We're going to add our check valve. Check valve is really quite as simple here. Let's see if we can show people what it is. So. It says here on the side which direction is the flow. So the flow opens the valve, okay, when it's vertical, and then there'll be a back pressure and it'll close the valve from the top side. A little submarine hatch there. Okay, that's all it is. Now, um, the valve itself comes with two different gaskets. Don't try to combine the two. They're really designed for two different size pipes. This will work with inch and a quarter or inch and a half pipe. You just need to use the different ring. So we're going to use the inch and a half, and we're going to take this gasket and put it on our pipe. Make sure we want our flow going the right direction. There we are. We'll install that, and we'll push it up as far as we can, and then just put on the ring. And that is all there is to it. It's compression fitting. It's all plastic, so don't over tighten with, with vice grips. Just go hand tight. If you get any leakage at all, then go grab a pair of pliers and give it just a little bit of an eighth of a turn. That's, that's it. If you go too much, you'll take that circle and under pressure because of the thread, right? Because it'll, it'll go and it'll go oval. And when it goes oval, you'll break the seal and then you're going to have more mess. So when you over tighten plastic fittings, you get an oval and then it leaks. Most people, when they have that happen, they go, oh, it's not tight enough. They tighten it more and they make it worse <laughs> and snap, they break it. 
So the key is with plastic, hand tight, and then if it leaks, then go a little bit of pressure, but avoid the oval. That's a nightmare. We're gonna connect this now. We're gonna leave the, the picture showing which way the flow goes, just so that if future consideration of anybody's looking to buy the property, they can see that it's installed in the right direction. All right, there we go. We're gonna go with uh, 20. So we'll put our fitting on. We'll slide this over this way. We'll slide this in. Okay, liking that. Hoppa. We'll get some on the hair as well. It's nice to get it everywhere. And we are going to come, try to come square off this. Good. Now, the discharge pipe needs to go up to the highest point and then come back down to enter into the pipe that we're going to. The pipe we're going to is on the other side of the room. So we're actually taking this discharge all the way around. And we're going to consider that um, height to almost the floor. We're going to get on the other side of the tree here. So we're going to put a couple of elbows. <laughs> And then we're going to go horizontally, I don't know, 30, 40 feet. We're not even at 25% of the capacity of this pump, so there's no concern. As long as we get higher than, than where we're entering into the line. You don't want to come straight across into the line. You always want to have that downward flow into the line. So we're going to go up to about 6 feet. And then our waistline is set at 4.5, so when we get over there, we'll bring it down. Piece of cake. We just got to connect a series of pipes and fittings to get over there. That's going to take a few minutes. We'll save you all the boring details. Let's go take a look at how we tie into the line. So whenever you see a clean out, you know that you're going to need a male thread. Okay. Now this is just a three inch male thread. And this is a conversion piece to convert to inch and a half diameter. That's the size of the line that we're running. All right. So then it's just a matter of cutting the fittings to finish connecting the pipes. Piece of cake. The only difficult part here is opening this bad boy up. Okay, that wasn't so difficult. We're gonna do a preemptive strike. <laughs> I'm gonna connect the fittings here. First, before I open it up. There we go. <clears throat> now I'm ready to go. Perhaps, yeah, that's a good idea. You can already smell it coming out, can't you? Okay, I can. All right, ready? And switch. Nasty. I don't think I can get that on any tighter. Nope. So we're going to want to use a 45 angle here. Bring it up to the ceiling. And then level that off. Good. And then a piece of pipe here, lift that up there. And then we just use pipes and connectors and connect the two dots. Piece of cake. So we're gonna connect the electrical panels now. There's two. One of them is the operating unit and then one of them is the alarm. Now this has a red and a yellow light. So one of them says, hey, there's something wrong with the unit. This one says, hey, there's something wrong with the power supply, and it'll be operating on battery, which comes in the unit. It's, a, it's own self-charging. That's kind of cool. There's a reset button, and that's it. This whole unit is, again, plug and play. You just mount a couple screws on the, our panel, and then we'll just hook it on, and we will connect the supply line right here to the bottom. Great. Nice and simple. Okay. So... In order to mount this, we want to mount this low enough that I can take the screw off and remove the panel. Right? Makes sense? It's only one screw. Good. Because we have to sort this out. So, let's get it mounted. So, we're going to leave ourselves a little bit of flexibility here. Keep 
keep everything looking level. It's nice when things are all level. It just looks tidy and organized and professional. It's really difficult to tell down here because my floor joists sure aren't level. <laughs> all right, now here we go. So let's take the top screw off and see if we can open this up. All righty. Oh. Well, that was easy. <laughs> yeah. Cool. So there is nothing for us to connect inside the unit. This is just for maintenance. This lead is already connected and it goes to the alarm and it's plug and play. All three of these lead wires are power supply. Two for the macerator, one for the pump. And then this here, that's your power supply. So what I'm gonna need to do is install a power supply box here so that I can take some live power over and then make my external connection just like plugging up a wall receptacle. Now I'm gonna suggest just for simplicity that you get your own breaker to the panel for this. And I do have a independent line behind me um, that was already available. So we're gonna use that and we are gonna just identify the breaker and use that as our on off switch if we ever need to take the power off. But I don't think that'll be required unless there's some major service work getting done. So we will put this back because we don't need to disrupt it. Beautiful. I just wish one of these days they'd make these screws and set them at a depth that was like consistent three and three quarters. Okay, I'm gonna put the alarm up here, out of the way, so that I have room to put my power supply underneath, three and three quarters. There we go. Find the holes. Let's get this one done first. Are you kidding me? There we go. That makes sense. There was a protective cover over the cap. <laughs> Didn't plug in. Uh, that's it. Okay. So then what I'm going to do because all it does is push connect. It doesn't have any securing system. I'm gonna take all this wire and I'm gonna mount it on a screw just to take the weight off the connection. So it won't accidentally come undone and set the alarm off. There you go. <laughs> That's a lot better. We are going to take all of these lines and take the zip ties off and we're gonna reconnect put them somewhere a little bit cleaner. But this needs to get connected as well. This is for our alarm, believe this or not. And this is why it is so vitally important that you have your own vent line for this machine right to the roof, because it has to stay at atmospheric pressure in order for this to work. This snaps in and you're done. <laughs> now the entire alarm system is completely connected all I have to do now is connect power. Wow, that is awesome. And clean up all of these pipes and hoses. You know, there's something to be said for zip ties. Zip ties will make a job like this really organized. And then, I just love them. Here we go. So now all I gotta do is put a box, bring my power over, and a couple grommets. Let's get some electrical tools. So this is a leftover power line going to the addition that we haven't reconnected yet, so I'm going to use it for the macerator for now. I'm going to run all brand new supply lines over there. Uh, it's in good shape, and let me just, there we go. My green light says it's on. I used Max to help me out, and we're just testing this. This would actually go beeping, make a noise, go red if there was power in that line. So I'm really comfortable that I got the right one. <sighs> so comfortable. Yeah, here we go. Ah! We're gonna do a, uh, a test. Uh, when in doubt, you can ground it out. Don't recommend doing this. If it was live, it would spark and melt and blow some stuff up, It'd be really cool. So that's how we know it's not powerful. 
go ahead and lick it at this point if you want to. You're fine. All right, now, yeah, safety second, right? Here we go. So I've got a regular box, welded box, and I am going to screw it to this surface here. All right, and so there's nothing keeping us from doing that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to wire this box first, and then, then we will screw it on after. Okay, so I want to have both supply lines coming in. Now, we are going to just back off the ground screw here a little bit. Good. And there we go. Of course, if this was a live circuit at this point, you'd already know. Because you'd be on the way to the hospital. <laughs> Do not fool around with electrical unless you have some experience, folks. But if you do, let me tell you. Wiring something like this is about as simple as connecting black and white. Make sure your ground is connected to the screw in the box. All right. Let's get the other end here. Now, the only reason I'm connecting it out here like this instead of installing the wall first we're in a tight spot, and I don't think Max would be able to get a camera angle of the connection if we did it the other way around. What we're going to do is uh, we're going to strip off just a little bit more of this cabling. It's not really enough there for us to get a good connection. Okay. There we go. And I want to connect this one on a moret to the other ground screw. Twist these together so it's more like a solid cable. And here we go. Do -do -do. Of course, when you're putting wire in a box, you always want to have the sheathing extending past the, the safety bracket. That way, when you tighten this up, you can keep the wires from pulling out. The purpose of the demonstration, I'm actually going to pull this wire all the way through so we can make all of our connections on camera to help any of you out, just in case you're going to try to do this at home. There we go. All right. Now we can make all these connections and we'll pull the wires back and then tighten it all up and then screw the ground in the back in a minute. So first is first, ground to ground. Hold the wires together. Twist the cap on. I know it's that easy. <laughs> you know, it's funny because I've had a lot of electricians on the channel making comments and some of them are positive and some of them are not so positive. It's funny when I teach certain aspects of certain trades, people tend to get their knickers in a knot. They don't want people knowing how to do stuff. Silly. I try to tell them, you know, if you're too expensive to hire, they're going to do it themselves anyway. You might as well learn how to do it safely. Here you go. I had a guy tell me, one of the electricians made a comment the other day, he said, you can't tell them how to do it, it's too dangerous for homeowners. I'm like, oh. I said, well, I don't mean to be rude, but your electrical license covers residential, commercial, and industrial applications. To be an actual electrician, you got to be able to wire almost everything in the world. I said, all a homeowner really needs to know how to do for most applications is be able to wire a 15 amp circuit and connect the blacks and the whites. You don't need a degree from university for that. My Lord. Anyway, here we go. All connected. Okay, so now I'm just going to grab a couple screws and mount it on the wall. Here we go. Here we are. Oh, guys, we have got a fully wired functional macerator unit right now. The only thing left to do is a couple of electrical staples on my supply line. Obviously this needs to be stapled to this panel. Hoorah! Now, let's go through this one more time. We have our three inch waste here. That line has its own venting. We have a vent line specifically designed for the macerator that's connected. Our discharge is connected brought into the line. We have it up and over and coming back down into the line. We have our alarm set up. Our alarm is wired. That's not going to fall out because we took the weight off. 
Our power is now connected. The only thing I have left to do is flip the breaker. And I want to go to the store real quick. I want to buy a solid plate to cover for this. Okay, I'm not putting a switch or anything on this, but I do need to protect those wires. I'm going to get a steel cover that screws right into these holes. They exist, and that's a great way to finish this up. So right about now, I'm sure a whole lot of you who are electrically inclined out there are going, whoa, what the heck are you doing putting a 110 line to a macerator with two motors? Yeah, you're right. I checked the instructions again because when we powered this up, my alarm was going off, which is why I yanked the wire out. And I'm like, I checked the instructions, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, oh, for the love of God, I just totally missed the fact that this was supposed to be powered up at 220. Now that requires a heavier gauge wire, that requires two breakers, that requires both the black and the white to be live, and that requires me to find a double 20 GE breaker. Hard to find. The good news is, is I had a double 40 in my panel, so I'm just going to kick in an extra sub panel so that I can run this wire until I get my new panel installed. All right, so emergency diverted. I have come across and I've bought myself the proper wire, and I'm going to finish off this video installation with eating a little bit of crow and fixing my mistake. It's okay. You know, when you're working hard on your place, you're going to get tired. You're going to miss something along the way. The secret to life is when you know you screw up. Go back and fix your mistake. Not a big deal. All right, here we go. So this is the proper wire for a 20 gauge or 20 amp breaker. It looks a lot alike. It looks almost identical to the wire that's in there now. It is a little thicker. This is a 12-2, not a 14-2. The 12 referring to the gauge, the smaller the number, the bigger the wire. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove all of this. Okay, so we got it all back together again. Whew. The funny thing is, you know, in my race to go and get my wire, I forgot to get the cover plate. Still got to get that, not a worry. I've got a whole year before I got a call for my final electrical inspection. <laughs> in the meantime, we'll make sure all of our systems are working great. And that'll be about it. So if you want to see the other video that we did in this basement, it's awesome. And if you're finding these videos helpful and you think maybe you're empowered and you're more confident to do renovations at home, but you just got a little bit of concern left, feel free, hit the join button, become a member of our channel, get access to help, okay? I've given out my phone number and special emails for consultation and help advice. I'm your 911 at your home renovation problems, so feel free to join us. It's only five bucks a month, and you can have the confidence in knowing you're not doing this alone, all right? And if you'd like to, subscribe to the channel, get notifications every week when our videos come out. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up button. That tells YouTube that you guys like our stuff, and if they know that, they'll share it with the world, and we can help more people. And if you want to see this, click the link right here. We got a few videos and a whole basement series here, all the different mechanical systems that we're upgrading as we go along. So click that. I'm sure you'll enjoy. If you're into macerators, you'll love to see what we did with jacking up the house and our hot water tank too.